fraction is going to be an atomic scale resolution and then something that's going to yeah, the samples go inside there. X soft X-ray spectroscopy. That's so right. these are all the different eyes, and yeah, I mean like the different yes. eyes that yeah, collecting some information. Um, and the second talk is going to be by Adolf uh, Ferretti. Uh, Adolf is here. Um, Adolf is the founder and director of Gem Research Swiss Lab, uh, which is a company uh, that uh, originated in Switzerland but is based in Thailand, uh, Switzerland, and a few other countries. Um, and through his work with studying with GEMS, he, he became passionate about um, uh, acquisition of amber specimens ethically uh, and also uh, providing support to those communities uh, that actually are involved in its acquisition. Um, so trying to improve the lifestyle of people in that area. Um, so uh, both Michael and Adolf are going to talk today and uh, I hope you enjoy what they have to present. Over to you. Okay. It's a fantastic great pleasure to come here to the site. Normally, everything that I have is a practical geologist. And then, um, then this is an out of box experience. What I, what I want to do with my hand research is I want to create an um, ethical project in the mining areas to help uh, particularly the children of the miners, talking about 50 to 100,000 miners. In a conflict zone and then slightly away from it. Um, we worked already since two years in the charity project, but it's not enough. Um, since 10 years, I received in Amber, and since two years, uh, my field workers report to me like what's happening in the area. So I have two parts today. First, I show you that you know where the area is and where you find the Amber, what you expect, and what is this wonderful, unbelievable contribution to sciences in these mines. And then I switch over to show what we have already done and then what I want to achieve. So um, all, the, all the research everything that I make here and the publications and the book we're making will all go for charity for children and amber mines. So at the moment we use an amber mines and here we have the Yavadi River and the Ishi mines in the north, in the north of Burma, in the Kashin state. Here is India. This side, we have the, the uh, Nara, Nara and tribes and Nara hills, very, very interesting uh, ecological research we have done there. It's also about one chapter. And then here we see old Amber Mine, uh, the so called Ukamwe, Ukamwe, it's Tiger Valley. It's a Tiger situation. There we find the Amber. It's unbelievable. Uh, and uh, here is the new Amber Mine. Yeah, this one about two years ago turned into a conflict zone between uh, the world's government and the Kashi uh, Independent Army, PIA Army. And that uh, when the amber became very expensive, they were capitalizing on amber. That's all I went there like four months ago. And uh, here's the idea. Yeah, this is you see all this here are amber mines from the erosion of the So um, here is the uh, here is from our ecological book. Uh, the amber was traded over hundreds of years with the trading routes, and here is the here is the mining areas with amber. So we are seeing today this amber line and this amber line. Remember, Kanai is is a keyword that many people are using, and Kanti is the keyword. But actually, my name is Fatma, which is a holy little hill inside the uh, mine. So this is match not from the dome. Uh, so to the, to the mine, I don't go exactly to the mine, I have to go like 10 kilometers outside and then train the miner to become a geologist, put him on the global camera, on giving all the tools to sample and register everything what he did. And then first we made a trip with some of the logistical all the different mines to look at outcrops, we made a plan, then we trained local, took the motorbike drivers, gave them all the equipment. And then we did the rest and then had to sample everything on a run the GoPro with the plastic device. And here is a here is a small channel, and in the middle of the channel suddenly are the Amorites. So now look at this. So this is the pitation box. See that layers of of uh, limestone and different compositions. Uh, 
sometimes are shared in between, so we have different blocks with ammonite and sunlight, and we found chloramifers in, in the cloud, in the uh, limestone. So we decided that we want to sample these profiles, so this is about 15 meters. Then we have like 20 to 30 samples we could sample and label them all. And then we made some statistics at the Hong Kong University. And we made great things. And then the lines go down into the box, all the layers. So this is how we meter that the lines go. And then we made them a program on the whole and registered exactly the position where it takes samples of GPS. Here you know, this game you see like the uh carbon bridge last bones with amber formations, and we have to click to solve it for the big out stuff. So what happened is you have to take out a lot of material, let's say 10 tons, and then you produce 5 million pieces of amber. Let's say just an amber. So then we're going to uh, go into the material. So, so next actually approach A. You have to take material from the market. Approach B is you take the raft and well everything is out. So approach A is starting a huge amount of amber, processing it, and come to pieces. And we calculated from three to five million pieces of amber one lizard. So how can we as a researcher go into the mine, collect 10 tons of amber, processing it and finding a lizard? It's not possible. I tried it in my lab, I have a little factory and three cutters and at 5 kilo or 5 to 10 kilo amber we produced uh, 900 pieces and there was not one single this is exactly nothing. nothing. Only one scorpion. Yeah. That's one thing, small one, the maximum. So, if we control the amber dividing from the mine, all the rough and no processing, we are not going to find the lizards. We need to process it, part of it with the local population, and then they get work and it's the livelihood and so on, they live from that, but that is in between, it has to be considered and, and have to buy from them. However, I have the point, even if we think we are doing our best, we have to run and, and, and compensatory charity project in the area. And now I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about it later. And first, I want to give you a sneak into the material and what I mean and how it looks. I mean, it comes to the market, sometimes the finding in the mine. Uh, now I'm making a small excursion into what we're finding and then I'll come back to charity what happens so far and what we want to do. And uh, I'm trying to get as much as possible the scientific community to come in and help with the whole charity idea. We have to do something to show you why. So uh, some of the rocks look like this, they're like 10 kilo, 5 kilo, 3. We can, we can process them ourselves and get maximum information about the And this is unbelievably important material for science. So we don't want to lose it. Uh, I want to remind you that all the lists of everything are found in one of this amber in a rock. No? Yeah. See? There's a layer, it's a control of the edge. Uh, we have sampled it, we made this edge, it's not a little bit longer thing, but it has to go to specialists. Some of the reasons that we find are like this the tail, the head, the eye, the whole body becomes the head. And then we see the uh, very long leg, the eyes here, you see skin, you see the balls inside, so we have information the amber on the skin, on the surface, on the bones, and in all kinds of stages. You see here, you see the bone inside, you see the lizard skin, and everything. So the head, some of you look like that, has eyes in here, and bone and this and this, and here comes the leg out here, maybe you see the decomposed. So far, we have like 100 lizards, but what the Burmese amber are very, very well known for is the evolution of insects uh, and scorpions, but a lot of feathers, some of them have color, a lot of 
operating curve, different types of headers, if block or not, if concise together. So we're working on that right now. There's a lot of it for my collection or a lot of part of it that I'm going to do now in cyclones, even if it's part of bird link, I just think about. But suddenly, I'll stop a bird link or something similar if the side of this. This is a um, then these, of course, these things that were involved with pollination, so these be what kind of pollen were there, what, what, what is happening in, in terms of, of uh, what kinds of flowers were there, what they were evolving in the insect here, that they have pollen from legs, you know, and then the pollen guys they have was applying to that flower, but you never find that flower in amber, so it starts to go from the plants to the insects to the hunters, and then they have online inclusion in amber also. And, um, and age control, and then something else. In Amber, we also find the events of the geological environment. So, Werner was sitting next to the Gato for a very long time when you look at the construction of the plate tectonic movements. You see it was sitting in the tropics forever and ever and ever until it went a little bit more us. And um, um, at that time, we, we don't know what, what exactly the tectonic set was in Island Arc. What kind of volcanic work? What is it we have there? So we, we are collecting all the particles, the ash particles in amber. We try to find stardust, meteorite particles, and, uh, and rock particles. And these rock particles in amber are unchanged. It's half a million year old material. They're unchanged to volcanic ashes. We measured the first part of the whole what type of volcanism it was. And the more and more things you find, and hopefully find zircon, and zircon you get for dating, and then you compare it with outside layers of the different foraminifers, and then we analyze, and then you get the animals not only in their entire environment, you also get it in their uh, total uh, geological, tectonic, and paleontological setting. And that's the new thing in Burma. Then comes the second pipeline we have established. If we want to find all this information from the particle side, then we have to cut ourselves all the material. Because when they when they're polishing all this amber, they remove everything from the surface, everything they make it most clean. No particle inside they want to make clean bees. So this is the opposite of what we want. We want to keep the particles inside. So I have to have to say, okay, we have to do ourselves to cut. So I sort out of this stuff about the particle. Oh, thanks, so you find the volcanic ash that you find in the amber and all the minerals are separated. And look how it's minerals. I was getting fun. It was six months counting every day, looking maybe at the end of my work today, I look every day, 30, 40 ambers. One hour before you go home or working. And then, and then cut off. Uh, after leaving, after you don't buy anymore, just don't drop them. Go and involve in ethical process, go there and say, okay, what can we do in terms of have to continue engaging? So that was our approach. So this is a video where we have, okay, the came in 2017, or it became 18, it came along here. Um, and that was that is this Baptist church, I mean, this Baptist church, one of them. So here is the Edichi camp, you see all these hands and heads in here, so then we do it a lot. So we made projects, sometimes we were like, let's say, it's raining, no, the children have, have nobody has raincoats, nobody, let's say, everybody raincoat. Dark comes come, but I've been told, as born to endure this kind of weather. You, I find like a ghost in my mind, and defeated, I gladly wear the crown. Thank you very much.